All right, I'm Greg. Welcome to the back room. I'm here with Rick Remender of various fame, Frankencastle, uh, Fear Agent, The Last Christmas, Sea of Red, anything else you want to name? Um, Hobo's Adventure into Cornflake. Um, that's a sexual position, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the the John the hobo the entire the the the, world, the greatest the greatest hobo is going to be the sequel, and it's going to deal with his grandfather in the Great Depression, and he was sort of the leader of a of a movement of hobos who discovered, um, you know, in the in, in times of economic crisis, the cornflakes are a good source of um, 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 oil. You can actually squeeze a handful of cornflakes for masturbation purposes, and there's there's a lot of natural lubricant in in, in that. Wow, that's that's going to be a real page turner, I think. Look, man, I mean, you know, some people might want, you know, they might not, some people might say it's perverse or nobody wants to read about the greatest hobo in the world. And to that I say, uh, you know, if you don't want to see a great a, a great hobo in the Depression masturbating into cornflakes, you know, we just don't have anything in common. I'm not going to pander to you if that's what you don't, you know. Well, and, and it really speaks as a superhero to our current economic climate, really. Yeah. Look, I mean, if you're out there and you can afford lotion for your masturbation or, you know, you just like to use a sock or whatever, it's, it's fine. You know, I'm not judging that. I'm just saying this was a generation that paved the way for people who were a little bit more inventive and they, they put a little more thought and time into what they had to do in order to just make ends meet, you know. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's 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 astonishing. I think it's groundbreaking work. It is it is astonishing ground <laughs> groundbreaking work. Thank you, thank you, Greg. Well, so tell us a little bit about kind of what what you're doing now. Fear Agent is something that's been you, you've really been rocking a variety of different volumes. I've been rocking, I've been yeah. rocking the volumes. Yes. Um, yes, I've been rocking volumes. Uh, Fear Agent is, uh, the last arc is launching in uh, July and from Dark Horse Comics. And we've got uh, the first three issues of those five wrapped now. We wanted to wait until we had a real good head start so that they can come out like clockwork. Um, and that's with uh, Mike Hawthorne and Tony Moore, same guys I'm working with on Frank and Castle right now. Um, I think the, uh, well, how long ago was it? The Eye Against Eye trade paperback came out about a month and a half, two months ago. Um, so there's six volumes out there now, including the Tales of. There will be a new Tales of, um, and hopefully some other Fear Agent news to come. Awesome. Well, so super exciting. Uh, in discussing that, you also mentioned the Frankencastle, which is the just completely huge departure from uh, what most people uh, expect from the Punisher, but has gotten a lot of really, really solid word. A lot of people love it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that the uh, the the aesthetic is very different, but ultimately, the frustration is somebody who's been writing Frank Castle in the Marvel Universe for going on two years now. The frustration that I come to a lot of times is that when I want him to murder or fuck someone up, he just can't logically do it. So he ends up fleeing. So I come up with clever ways for him to get away from the sentry, or clever ways for him to get away from, you know, the hood. And uh, I didn't, I didn't want that. And I also didn't want to, um, you know, I figure if you took a, a, a shot at the most important man in the world in the Marvel universe, Norman Osborn, and tried to assassinate the guy, he would, he would fuck you up. And and I wanted it to, I wanted to feel like there are stakes for Frank's mission, and but there are also magic and crazy things in the Marvel Universe. So, uh, you know, Frank got killed. He got taken down and dropped to the lowest point in his, in his, in his life. This is after he had uh, the Hood resurrect his family and he had to put them back in their graves. And basically, I wanted to drop him as low as I could think of a way to drop him and then rebuild him with some new abilities that then make it possible for him to take his list of people that he does not like and bad guys who do bad things and have the ability you know, the, the question always being, what, what, what if Frank Castle actually had the power set to do the things that he wants to do in the Marvel Universe? So I wanted to give him that. I wanted to make him a real player, you know, to where he can go out and, and do some heavy damage to the, to, the, to the guys who have been dicking him around these last, these last couple of years. Well, which is, which is great in that it's, it's something that's not really happened with Frank Castle to this point in the mainstream Marvel Universe. It's happened in, like, what if? What if stories? Right. It's happened in Frank, you know, uh, the Pun what if the Punisher killed the Marvel Universe? It's happened in all all sorts of quote unquote fantasy stories, as if the you know continuity is real and the rest. Of it. But you know, it's an idea that people like to explore. And to me, it was just something where I wanted to see it done. I wanted to see Frank 
uh, augmented to the point where, where, where he goes back out on his mission, and instead of just being like, hey, it's a Puerto Rican selling crack, take that, kid, clack, 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 uh, you know, like, Frank Castle, party bummer, put down that joint, boom. It was, it was, he could take on the real villains in the Marvel Universe, which, uh, not, not, not to... Not to say that, 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 that the larger the crime, the more important it is, but in the case of the Marvel Universe, it sort of is. You know, the guys who are doing the heinous things, the Doctor Dooms, these characters, they are of a power set where Frank shows up and then Frank goes down. But I, so anyway, the idea was to give him an opportunity to be able to go out and handle those threats. Well, and, and as you discuss that, I think one of the points you make is, is crucial to any great story, and that's you wanted to see it done. You, you know, you wanted to see Frank Castle go after these power players, and, and that, that always, it feels like that's always crucial for a really good story. Like, if you, if you want to see it happen and you write it, that's where people go, oh, that's great. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I think that there's, there was a lot of fear that this would be something that would that would fail, you know. And uh, I knew that it would. It, I knew that with Tony Moore and, and Dan Brereton doing the art, and, and now we've got Roland Roland Bashi doing a few fill-ins. I knew with the quality of artists we had, it would be a good-looking book. But you recognize that there's a risk factor in doing anything like this. But there's also a risk in not doing what you want to do because you're afraid as a writer, or pandering to what you think people want. Pandering makes the 90s happen. Um, you know, uh, pandering makes bad, boring shit happen, and it's a neediness that I didn't, you know, I didn't, I've, I didn't do all of this work to get into a position where I could then try and think about, well, what do people want? I know what I want. I know what my friends want. I know what gets us excited. And uh, if we're excited about what we're doing and it's our best foot forward, whether I win or lose, I can at least look back and go, I gave it my all and it was what I wanted to do. And we're really lucky that the sales have you know, gone way up and that people are, are flocking to it in droves and new readers are, you know, uh, and you know, hopefully we'll see a Legion of the Monsters book spin out of it and, and a lot of other fun stuff because the reaction has been, been really nice. Well, that's awesome. So Le would Le a Legion of the Monsters book, would that be something you want to do? Is that something you want to tackle? It's something that, that, that I would want to do, yeah. I mean, whether or not it's something that, that there will be time for or that we could actually get together, I, I, there's no way of knowing. But I know that the, I, the people have come out of the woodwork for the 70s Marvel monsters. Yeah. And, you know, they're like, you know, thank you for bringing them back into prominence and, and you know, give, shining a light on all these old Kirby beasts and, uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, the, and, and it's wonderful. Well, so uh, we don't want to take up all your time today. Is there anything else you've got coming up, anything in the pipeline you want to tell us about or you're excited about? I can't talk about my new Marvel stuff yet, um, but we've got Last Days of American Crime coming out from Radical. Last two issues of that uh, uh, coming out by the summer. And we've got the last arc of Fear Agent launching in July, uh, continuing on, on Punisher, and then some, uh, some big news uh, this summer in, in San Diego for me. Awesome. Big news for you. You can't preempt it, but we should keep an eye out for you in San Diego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got there, there's there's some terrific stuff happening. I mean, one of the things will be obviously Sam Worthington's involvement in Last Days of American Crime and some other news, you know, and, and along those lines, and a couple of uh, big announcements of things I'll be doing at Marvel. Wow, awesome. So you're you're on where you're coming up on the year anniversary of your. Uh, exclusive contract with Marvel. Yeah, 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 right around now, that's right. Yeah, April, I guess, yeah. So, how's it feel? It, it's great, yeah, and I mean, you know, I, I'm, the only fear I ever had was that I would, uh, that I would not be able to do the, the sorts of things that I'm comfortable doing and the kind of comics that I like. Um, but they didn't bring me in to, to, you know, to take away my voice. They, they brought me in to, to write the kind of comics I write. And they, creatively, it's a very satisfying time, and it's a great place to be. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time with us. We really appreciate it. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for watching.